are you doing? What you driving? Explorer. Okay, that black one. Yeah, I saw that. That's your family wagon? Yeah. Okay. Hey, but I love you back, buddy. Well, appreciate it. Doing all right? I am. I am. Hey, good morning to you. How y'all doing today? Pretty good. You're alive and kicking. Amen. Come on. Let's jump up on our yeah, let's jump up on our feet. I appreciate it. I've been out there loving on people, talking. Pretty good crowd, especially when you stand up, man. I tell you what, it is August. Amen. It is August. Yeah, it's hot here in August. But uh, anyway, I'm glad you're here. Thank you for being at church. I'm Pastor Gary Clark here at Fellowship Church. If it's your first time visiting with us, you're here today. Hey, you get to be you. I'm going to be me. You might go after you hear me. I don't like him. Well, at least it was me. You know, hope that isn't the case. I hope that you like real and honest and, uh, you know, that's just who we're going to be. Amen. And uh, we're going to love on you today. We're going to have a good day. I'm in a series on the last days churches. There's seven in the book of Revelation. Uh, and they were real churches, but they're also, I believe, prophetic in nature. And so we're going to talk about one today, the fallen church. And uh, it was a great church. It was a great church. And they just, they missed, they messed up in one area pretty bad. And it's an area I think that you and I can uh, relate with and we'll probably have struggled with it too at times. So we're going to talk about it today. It should be a good day. Amen? So anyway, let's put our hands together. Thank God we live in America. Don't give up. Don't give up on your country. Amen? Come on. Come on. Be strong. What are we starting out with today? Narrow Road. Amen. I love this song, and it's got a little bit of a mountain feel to it. Is this the one? I think it is. I mean, I just came from the mountains. I was up there cutting grass. People think I'm nuts. Well, the grass don't stop growing. And I could get somebody to cut it, but I like going up there and just riding that mower and going out to eat at the little restaurants and, and uh, just being, you know, I don't know, it just reminds me of back where I grew up, and I have a good time, and then I get up there, and then I miss being here. Amen. So I was there for a few days, not very long at all. But uh, anyway, a song like this you might hear up in the mountains. It's called Narrow Road. One more time. Let's thank the Lord we're in church. Can we come on? Don't you get up. Here we go. Come on. You're in church. Make the most of it this morning. Amen. Here we go. Let's sing it together. Appreciate you guys. Amen. Walking for a while, my feet are getting tired, my heart's a little heavy, but you keep me going. I've been walking for a while, mile after mile, my soul's a little weary, but you keep me going. Said it be a narrow road. He said it be a narrow road. So why am I surprised when he seems I'm on my own? He said it be a narrow road. This world will never be my home. The journey might be lonely, but I'll never. Walking for a while, wandering in the wild, but you're holding me steady. Yeah, you keep me going. Walking for a while, following the fire, your spirit is within me, and it keeps me going. You said it be a narrow Said it be a narrow road. So why am I surprised when he seems I'm on my own? He said it be a narrow road. This world will never be my home. The journey might be lonely, but I'll never be alone. Oh.
never be alone. I will walk wherever you lead, cloud by day and fire by evening. You're the lamp that's guiding my feet, so I can see where I am going. I will walk wherever you lead, cloud by day fire by evening. You're the lamp that's guiding my feet so I can see where I am going. I will walk wherever you lead it. Cloud by day and a fire by evening. You're the lamp that's guiding my feet so I can see where I am going. Said it be the road. it be the Surprised that he seems I'm on my own. You said it'd be a narrow road. This world will never be my home. The journey might be lonely, but I'll never be alone. Oh, no, I'll never be alone. Oh. Amen. What a good song, man. Come on. What's up next, Mitch? What's happening? Greater still. Greater still. Amen. Come on, guys. Glad you're here again. We appreciate you. And I remember when I first uh, went to church, I was about almost 16, and my mom had been watching Billy Graham as a drunk woman the night before, a preacher on TV, and didn't mean to. And I came home. She said, we're going to church in the morning, drunk as a skunk. And we walked, and I've never forgot that, what it was like that first Sunday. So if you're here today for the first time, maybe you hadn't been to church in a long time. Maybe this is different. I have a lot of people say, you know, they maybe grown up Catholic or whatever it might be, but this, they come here and say, well, it's different. And I know it's different. I'm different. We're different. But you're here today. And uh, I thought I was going to get, uh, the preacher's going to take all our money that day, and, and I was ready to fight. I was ready to fight. It was crazy. And, uh, but you know what? I didn't get in a fight. I, it was okay. And it all worked out. And three weeks later, I'd put my faith in Christ. I got saved. And so did my drunk mama. She never drank another drop. <laughs> Amen. So there's hope. There's hope in this house today. Say that out loud. There's hope in this. One more time. There's hope in this house today. So if you're feeling like just really crappy, you know, and man, been punched in the face maybe and just feeling like you had nothing, listen. Uh, listen, you are something, you do matter, and uh, you're here today, and we're glad you're here, amen? So just want you to know that today. Glad you've come. One more song, let's do it. Greater still. Let's sing together. One more this morning, amen. Praise the Lord. You made me at my lowest moment You saw me at my very worst When I expected disappointment Love was all I heard Cause my sin was deep Your grace was deeper and my shame was wide Your arms were wider And my guilt was great Your love was greater still You answered me when I was naked And you clothed me in your righteousness You pulled me from the depths of darkness into your light again. Oh, into your light again. Cause my sin was deep, 
Your grace was deeper My shame was wide Your arms were wider My guilt was great Your love was greater still Your love, your love As my sin was deep Your grace was deeper And my shame was wide Your arms were wider My guilt was great Your love was great how deep, how wide, how far, how high The love of my Savior, the love of Christ How deep, how wide, how far, how high The love of my Savior What a masterpiece of a song. Wow. Wow. You know, and I want to just say it. We love Jesus and we love people. Say that out loud with me. We love and we love people. That's where you're at. You're at a church and that's what we started on 21 years ago. And we're not getting off the wagon. Y'all, you understand me or not? Say, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind might your strength love your neighbor as yourself we need to love him first we need to love them but don't forget to love you you matter you have value you're not the piece of garbage that somebody told you you were and many of us came from that not just parenting life can suck but God loves you he loves you. I love that right there. And you're in a church that, that believes that. You understand that or not? Say, so, other churches do other things. That ain't us. We love Jesus. And we're going to love people till hell freezes over. You understand? That's where we're at today. I want you to know that. I want you to feel that. I want you to believe that. I want you to believe you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You can make it through any hell you've been through with the love of God. And the things you've done in your life, He will forgive you. He will restore you. He will help you. Okay? Don't blame Him. Run to Him. Gosh, He loves you. That song just got me this morning. Did it get some of y'all say? Oh, yeah, come on. That was good stuff right there. <laughs> 
Wow. It's hard to sing a song like that judging somebody, ain't it? I don't know about you. I'm singing that song. I'm thinking about me, not how bad you are. I'm thinking about what he did in my life. Man, I think we'd be a whole lot better off if we spent more time in that area. Amen? What a, what a good song. Anyway, let's pray together. Lord, thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us first. Help us not get away from that. Your first love. Help us not get away from how you loved us, how you've cleansed us, how we're clean in your sight, how we've been made righteous because of you. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, as a church to always stay close to you, to appreciate you and your love and what you do for us. Oh, God, crawl up inside of us. Let us have that kind of love, Holy Spirit love, for one another and for our town, for our families. We give you credit, Lord. You know we're sinners. You know everything about us. And yet you love us still. What a thought. Lord, I pray for folks today. Lord, they're here. They're watching online. If they died, Lord, they don't know they'd go to heaven. They're living life without knowing how much you love them and it getting on in the inside of them and them really believing, really believing. I pray today they'll put their faith in you, Jesus, not a church, not a preacher, not themselves, but in you, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I pray it today, Lord. I pray none will leave lost online or in this room. Help us, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Be seated if you would. Also, can we thank the Lord for Mr. Alexander Christie? What a great job. Great message. I sat in that country town, Burnsville, with about 1,000 people, but none of them were out. They're either at church or they're sleeping because they don't want nobody to see them on the road that they're not at church. <laughs> but I was sitting at that little square in the town of Burnsville, North Carolina, listening to them sing and you preach. And I'm thinking, wow, do I ever need what he's saying? That's what I needed. That's what I needed. I sat there and I just, I just ate it up, man. It was fantastic. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Bro. You know what I mean? And love you. You know that, right? I know. You know that for sure, right? Yes, no doubt about it. None. All right, thank you. There you go. You're good. Go get them. Thank you, Pastor. And thank you for your trust. It means everything. It really does. Thank you for that. And, well, good morning, everybody. And we're just so glad you're here this morning. And, and if you today's your first day here, my name is Alex, and welcome to Fellowship Church. We're just so glad you're here today. And if it is your first time here, do us a favor, please, and fill out that guest registry that's right there on your worship guide that you got when you walked in the door this morning. Or you can meet us out at the Welcome Center after the service and fill out the same basic info. And we promise not to bother you. We're not going to call you. We're not going to harass you in any way, shape, or form. We just want to send you a note of thanks for being here this week. And we also want to send you a postcard whenever a big event is coming up here at the church. So if you don't mind doing that, please do that this morning. And good morning, everyone online. Thank you so much for tuning in with us. Do us a favor. Send us a Facebook message or an email, and we'll do the same thing for you. Fishers of Men are meeting tomorrow night. This is an awesome group of guys that are getting together and they're mentoring each other and lifting each other up in the Lord, um, helping each other with each other's paths um, as far as following along with a biblical life and helping each other become the best Christians they can be. And it's just a really awesome Paul-Timothy kind of relationship that they're building together. And they're going to be meeting tomorrow. So if you're a part of that group already, please come on out. And if you'd like to be a part of that group, guys, uh, come on out tomorrow. They'd love to plug you into it. It's just a great opportunity to serve and also to grow. And ladies, we're going to be launching um, a, a ladies' chapter of this coming up really, really soon. So keep your eyes out for that, please. And we got Bible studies going on nearly every day of the week here at Fellowship Church. Our Monday night is going to take a little break, um, and then we're going to get right back on the horse here in a few weeks. But right now we got our Tuesday nights filled up. Our Wednesday we got CR here, of course, and then Thursday we got our Bible studies. Tuesday morning we had a great Bible study at, at the office. So if you have not plugged into one yet, please do us a favor. Uh, do so. Just jump into a Bible study. You'll be welcome. You'll be loved. You'll be appreciated that you're there, and you'll grow. So if, if you have any questions, give us a call at the office or just check out your worship guide. Every Wednesday is our grief share group. Starts at four o'clock here at the church. 
It's for you or anybody you know that's, that's suffered that profound loss of a loved one. They want to they wanna come alongside you. They want to love you. They want to lift you up. And then over time, you may be able to do the same for them. So please, come on out on, on a Wednesday night if, if you're in need of some help with grief and pain you've got in your heart. And then stay. Stay right afterwards at 6 o'clock out in the foyer. There's an incredible meal served to you by people that love you, all at no cost. And then at 6.30, they come in here for awesome music testimony time, time in God's Word before they break up into small groups. And this is our fellowship recovery time where it's, just, it's all about you coming closer to the Lord with the help of other believers, overcoming your hurts, your hang-ups, any struggles you might have in your life. So that's every Wednesday here at Fellowship Church. And then this coming Saturday, this reminder, uh, Brother Joe passed away a few weeks ago, and we just want to remind you we're having a, a service, a, a celebration of life here. If you're able to come out next Saturday, we'd love to have you here at Fellowship Church at 1 o'clock. And Senior Fellowship is coming up a week from Thursday, not this Thursday, but a week from Thursday on the 17th. We'd love for you to sign up on your way out today, please, if you can be a part of this luncheon. It's going to be a great luncheon. I believe they're going to do oven-roasted ham with mashed potatoes, and we're going to do like little individual um, strawberry shortcakes at the pastor's request. So we're going to be making a really nice spread for you, this, this Senior's Fellowship. But just sign up on your way out if you don't mind. And local kids need some help. You know, school's right around the corner, and, you know, some folks are struggling to get and make their ends meet a little bit. So if you're able to help out, um, over at the sign-up table, there's sheets of paper with all the list of the stuff that we need. Uh, it might right be there in your worship guide as well. I didn't check. I'm sorry. But it's, it, we really would appreciate your help. If you don't mind, start bringing some stuff here to the church. We'll make sure it gets down to the kids' needs. Um, it's all for free. They're going to be plugging in over at the uh, YMCA and Sky Academy and just helping people. Everything you get. Not a dime is charged for anybody, uh, to anybody, for any of the stuff. They just come in and they're able to take what they need. So please help us out with that and help these local kids get some new stuff. And this is Our Town. Thank you so very much for supporting Fellowship Church with, the sh with wearing shirts and wearing hats and putting bumper stickers on your car, just wearing a smile on your face and being salt and light out there in the community. It means the world and it makes a difference. So please do us a favor, help us out with that. If you've not done that yet, everything over here to the right, everything over there is like five bucks. If you don't have the cash today, we'll give it to you. We just ask that you wear it. And, and throughout the four year, we've got bumper stickers and magnets for your car. Uh, we just really, really need your help getting the word out about Fellowship Church. Church. And give2fc.com, super easy way to give online, uh, one-time gift, weekly, monthly, however you'd like to set that up. Uh, many of you have already started doing that. Uh, we really, really appreciate that. And of course, everyone up north, thank you for your gifts up north, uh, from up north, through that P.O. box. Um, we, we appreciate all your notes of encouragement, and many of you are still giving, even throughout the summer months, and supporting this ministry. Thank you so much for that. And as always, we just want to invite you over to hospitality right after the service, over here to the left. If you've never been, it's all for free. Um, I actually forgot to mention something, and I forgot to have an announcement. It's my fault. We have communion today right after the service. So before you head on over for hospitality, we're going to go outside, go to the crosses, have communion, but then come on back inside. So we don't have a ton of donuts and stuff left over. Uh, we just really, really love for you to make a new fellowship friend this morning. And love and appreciate you, and God bless you. Love you back, buddy. I was thinking this morning, I mean, 21 years almost, and we started Fellowship Church by uh, giving away Krispy Kreme donuts. And I actually was the donut guy. And because I'm from Carolina and lived here for you know, a long time before we started the church, but still, I love those Krispy Kreme donuts. And I'd go pick them up and when we started. And I tell you what, Gary don't do that no more. I would be big as a pickup truck if I did that. Because I'm the kind of guy, how many of you like me, whether it's pizza or donuts, as soon as you get it, the box is open. And they don't make it home. How many also are like me if it's a pizza? You sort of slide it back together so it looks like you didn't do it. <laughs> I do that. I do that. Oh, absolutely. That's why I don't like them square ones. You can't do that. <laughs> I'm horrible. It's just the way it is, you know, and it's terrible. But anyway, but thank the Lord for everybody that serves in hospitality. I can only imagine 21 years of all those donuts every single week. It, it'd fill the parking lot, wouldn't it? It'd fill this whole campus, all that, all that they've done over the years. But that's all free for you just to be able to love on folks. Got another song this morning. Hold mm -hmm. on. Is it new? It's a yeah. brand new song. For us. Is it? All right. So you ready to go? Yeah. Come on, let's tell, let's tell Saltwater we love them and appreciate them this morning. Amen. Come on. Brand new song. Yeah. 
So my four-year-old got her ears pierced yesterday. And I said, did it hurt? And she goes, yeah. I go, was it worth it? And she goes, yeah. <laughs> and it got me thinking about this because I heard the song on the radio. Mitch picked it, but I heard it a few weeks ago when, you know, just one of those days when you're going through something. We all, we all have our moments and it just was a fitting time. And it reminded me of, of this verse in Romans. It says, we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance, and endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope in salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us, because he's given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. So that's what this song is about. Smoke clouds all around I couldn't see your face Darkness consumed me Stuck in the bitterness But I know there's a light that's waiting up ahead So I stay in the fight And look to the one who said Hold on just a little bit longer Deep down there's a well of faith Let hope arise as you're lifting up my name And just hold on Just hold on Hold on Stay in the fight and look to the one who says Hold on just a little bit longer I know it's gonna be okay These days are gonna make you stronger You'll find purpose in the pain Hold on just a little bit longer How blessed are we to have them sing? Come on. What a great song. Wow. I love that. 
Jump up on your feet with me one more time. Jump on up here. Wow, man, just hold on. How many, that's where you at right now? You holding on, you holding on right there, amen? How many had some mess, some crap in your life? It was rough, and you held on, and you made it to the other side. Can I see some hands? You made it. Let's thank him for that. Come on, let's thank him. Make some noise this morning. Thank you, Lord, for helping me through the mess in my life. Amen. Wow, good song, great song, great song, perfect for you guys to sing it. It was great. Minister to the preacher, I know that. If it ministers to me, if it gets to me, it gets to them. That's why I'm on the front row. Come on, I want it, man. Thank you for giving. That's going to come up in just a bit. Thank you for giving to the Lord's work. And uh, he gets all the credit for anything you see, anything we buy, anything we have. Uh, we just commit to you that it's debt-free. And uh, we're not going to take you off a cliff in the debt. Amen. And uh, we just thank you for all that you do. And we'll, we'll receive an offering in just a moment. But let's sing this incredible song. What a beautiful name. It's been a while since I heard this. And I love this song. Amen. That's why we're here today. Jesus. That's why we're here. We love him and we love him first. You were the word at the beginning. One with God the Lord most high. Hidden glory in creation. Now revealed in you a Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a 
Praise the Lord this morning. Great. Thank you. Amen. Remain standing one last moment, but thank you guys so much. What, what great music. Just, man, that's, that's, I love it. So anyway, I enjoyed sitting in that little town square in Burnsville listening, but it's a whole lot better, you know. So if you can be here watching online, get here if you can. Amen, because it's something else. But again, thank you, for, uh, thank you for giving to the Lord's work here at Fellowship. Last week... You're real close uh, last week to a uh, million dollars for that kid's wing. And uh, yeah, it looks like it looks like you're right there. We're right there. We're right there at a million dollars for that kid's wing. And it's not about the money, guys. It takes money to do stuff. That's something, that's what we do on the last offering of the month. That was last week. Today's offering takes care of the needs of the ministry. But, 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 that's, that's amazing. That's amazing. And so... Uh, me and the architect, who's on the second, third row right there, we're going to get together. And uh, we felt like need us, uh, need us some good uh, backing behind us. And we felt like we got it. And so we're going to be starting to now move that sucker forward. Amen. It'll take a while. Take a while. Keep us in your prayers, especially keep uh, Norbert in your prayers. And, and he might include some other people to help him in the congregation. He's got a couple of people that that he might can lean on a little bit too, but just keep him in your prayers as we move that thing forward. Amen? It'll be a while. We're, get, we're going to get there though. Amen? Come on. Thank you for giving to the Lord's work what we do here, and uh, we appreciate you. If you can give cheerfully, we'll receive your gift. If for some reason you can't give it that way, then I'm going to ask you to hang on to it. And, uh, and you know, we'll be here. be here next week. But if uh, we just want you to give cheerfully as unto the Lord today. Amen? He'll bless you for that. He'll bless your heart. You won't get more money by Friday, I promise you. Most likely that's not going to happen. <laughs> but he will bless you because what we're doing is a blessing here. Amen? Yes or no? And God's good to us. Russ, my buddy, I'm going to ask you to pray for us. Come on, buddy. I don't do it often, so don't, don't, don't faint on me. Amen. This is my buddy. I knew his mom and daddy for years. Amen? And this guy was loved by his mom and dad. Sure. And uh, life ain't been easy. How about that song, Hold On? Did you like it? Do you it. liked it, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. And those songs about uh, how he loves us and our sin and how he forgives us, those ring a bell, don't they? they definitely and do. they ring a bell with me. I ain't no different than you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so, buddy, that's why I love you, man. So thank you for giving to the Lord's work. Let's pray to buddy. Buddy, pray for us. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this beautiful day mm. and these beautiful people. They are. And just like the song said, thank you for being the light. Because we need the light now. The, the world, world is dark at times, it but is. you're not. You're, you're always not. there. You're and always we, we there. love you and we appreciate it. We God do. bless all these people and mm. bless this day. Amen. Amen, buddy boy. Appreciate you, man. Proud of, proud of you, okay? God bless you, man. Amen. God bless you. Y'all be seated if you would. Amen. Thank you much.
Thank you, Miss Karen, everybody serving us today. I love that song, but I'd have to have the words and I can't see. So I'd have to have them on the screen or something. Amen. Let's go to God's Word this morning. Amen. Let's jump on in. What time is it? That clock lies. 9.15. See, that thing says 9.25. You know. See, I get up every week that staring at me and it says, you don't know how to be on time. You a bad man. That's what I see when I look at that sign right there. Let's go to God's Word this morning. Let's go. We've got some ground to cover. We're in a series on the seven churches in the book of Revelation, the last day's church. We started out not in order. I went with the last one, which is the worst one, and it was a church at Laodicea. That church focused a lot on money, 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 money. Isn't it funny in the last days how that seems to be driving people away from the church? And God said, don't do it. And it was also a church that judged they looked at themselves. They were good. Other people weren't. Isn't that something also how the church, we get into that, and people don't want to go, okay? So we don't want to be that. We don't want to be the judging church. Say that out loud. We don't want to be the what? Don't want to. I don't, don't want to do that. Now, God's Word, it, it, uh, it uh, hits us. <laughs> of course it does. We, we feel you know, wrong, good, that's good, bad, it's a good thing. But I don't want you to leave here feeling like we judged you, that we're better than you. You hear me or not, say. Or that the only reason you come here, they just want my money. That's a bald-faced lie. Got it? Say. Not who we are. I don't want to be that at all. Okay? So these churches, I'm, as I look at them, I want to see where we're screwing up and where we can do better. Next one was the loving church. I went from whoo, whoo, way over here. <laughs> the church in Philadelphia. Not one bad thing was said about this church from the Lord. Not one. Doesn't mean there weren't bad things. It was just, it didn't rise to the level to make it in the book. That's pretty nice. Isn't it amazing how love covers a multitude of what? It's funny. We, we follow after this in church, and we follow this, and we want to do that when it's love. That covers a multitude of sins. It's love what people will. Who doesn't want to? Who doesn't want to reach out to an outreached hand, an outstretched hand? Who doesn't want that? Love. So that's what we want to be, and we can do way, 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 way better in that department. Amen. Let's go to church number three. Okay, the last day's church. Churches from the Book of Revelation. There's seven. Don't know if I'll do them all individually, but so far we are. We'll see. The fallen church. Could you say that? The first one was the judging church. The second one was the loving church. And this one is the what? One more time. It's the what? Come on, now help me. It's the fallen church. It's the church at Ephesus. Now, how many of you love when you read God's Word? There's a book you love in the New Testament. It's called the book of Ephesians. That's a great book, the book of Ephesians. Talks how we're already in the heavens. We're seated in the heavenlies with Christ. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. You know that one, don't you? Amen. Come on. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So what great, and that, that one about husbands love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. I mean, the incredible book, the book of Ephesians. So this church was an incredible church. You hear me or not? Say this was a great church. You can't get no better than this church. Let's check it out. Some info on this church. Okay, it was in Turkey, located in what's modern Turkey. Ephesus was the leading center of the Roman Empire. Rome ruled the world, and this was the leading center, and this church was right there. Grand Central Station, right there. So that's where it was located. Paul spent a little time here on his way back to Antioch as he would do missionary journeys. The Apostle Paul, that's how they got the gospel of Jesus in part. Others had gone there as well, but he really stayed there. At one time on his third missionary journey, Paul spent, say it with me, how many years in Ephesus? Come on, don't you know? Three years in Ephesus. The Apostle Paul, the one who was saved on the road to Damascus and was changed. He wrote 13 books in your New Testament. The Apostle Paul, okay? Very special, very, 
unusual man that God used. He says as one of the apostles or disciples born out of due time, the apostle Paul. So let's check it out. Let's just look at what Paul, what was going on, Paul in Ephesus? We're just going to check the church out. Acts number 19. It came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, here's our city, he came to where? Ephesus. And he found certain disciples. There were believers because the gospel had spread from Jerusalem, going all the world to preach the gospel. And it had spread. And there were some believers there in Ephesus, but not a whole lot. And he went into the synagogue. Paul did. There was a synagogue, a Jewish synagogue. Because it was such a big city. They're going to have it. And he spoke boldly for the space of three months. He disputed with them. He persuaded them of the things concerning the kingdom of God. He preached to them Jesus. It's crazy. The Messiah in a Jewish synagogue. Keep going. This continued by the space of two years. So he was there, people think, for about three years total. So that all that dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks, everybody in that center is hearing about Christ and the gospel's going. And honestly, you and I probably have the gospel today, to be honest with you, because of what happened way back here. People started moving and going and spreading and doing. And look at us today with the gospel of Christ. So what happened? I want you to see this. This is important to me. God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. Paul wasn't a faker. When Paul healed somebody, they were healed. Y'all hear me or not say? I didn't know if I'd say this, but I'm going to say it. That's where I get in trouble. Today's culture, ah, oh, today, the world, the world, the world's so bad. It is bad. School systems are bad, a lot of them. My niece is a principal at a couple of different schools, a vice principal up in the Carolinas. They've had to set up a litter box in the bathroom because some kid is identifying as a cat. True story. It's happening. People identify certain things. That's the way they feel it. And so you got to take care of that. But I want to say this. A lot of people have been identifying as faith healers. And they're not. It's funny how we'll get on our soapbox and we'll preach down about the world. But you'll get up and act the fool and act like you got this power that the Apostle Paul had. And you're popping people on the head. You're falling backwards, covering you up with a blanket. And people might not like me saying this. I don't give a hoot. I'm old now. If you don't like some kid masquerading as a cat, how about you quit masquerading as a faith healer that you're not? If you're a faith healer, go to Moffat and start healing them. Go to Ephesus. Go to Ephesus and start healing people. I want you to see the real deal. Here's the difference between the real and the phony. God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. So that from his body were brought unto the sick. Say it with me. Handkerchiefs. Turn on TV. You'll guarantee you'll find somebody that's wanting to send you a handkerchief. And aprons. This is where this came from. There's would-be Pauls that want to do what Paul did. I'm not saying God still can't do special wonderful things. But God does special wonderful things all the time. He's using all kinds of different things today that was not maybe used back then. You hear me or not say? Here's what I mean. Technology, hospitals, doctors, cures. I give God the credit for all of that. You hear me or not say? Yeah, thank the Lord. You ought to give him credit for that. But during this time, this is what happened. Also, the gospel was beginning to spread around the world. And God did special things. I don't understand it. We can ask him one day. So that from his body, Paul's body, under the sick, these handkerchiefs and and, and things, when, when he would touch those things, diseases departed from them and evil spirits as well. You might say, why'd you bring up that cat stuff? Well, just keep reading. Then certain of vagabond Jews, they were ones that would exercise demons. 
They weren't Christians. They took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits in the name of who? Now, this is funny. These are people that don't believe in Jesus. But they saw Paul doing something. So they want to get in on it. This is the church at Ephesus. Not the church, but this is happening in that city. <laughs> and they said, in the name of Jesus, we adjure you, this man possessed with a demon. We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches, to come out of that man. So these are people that don't know the Lord. They've seen Paul doing something, and now they identify him as Paul. You follow my drift or not? And there were seven sons of one man named Sceva. He was a Jew and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit, one of the funniest verses in the Bible, you ought to underline it or go back home and check it out. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who you, Willis? <laughs> See, the devils believe and tremble. The church has no business to be faking something. I'm not saying that God doesn't fill us with power. I believe that. I believe different ones have different gifts. But if you want to know the truth of the matter, I think a lot of the gifts that I'm seeing today are not real and they're not true. And I know I get in trouble for saying that, like you're judging people. I don't know. It's math, man. I came from the country. Okay? I don't believe the church should turn into a carnival or be a magic show. You hear me or not? Say, I want to be real to tell the truth. Hey, if you can heal people, matter, I'll go with you today to Inglewood Hospital. I'd love to see them all. I'd love to see it all emptied out by this afternoon. How about you? Do you think if Jesus went, it would get emptied out? Say yes or no. Do you think if Paul went to the hospital, you think it might get emptied out? We need to be doing right, telling the truth, doing the right thing. So what happened? They tried to cast this demon out of this joker. I don't know you, the demon screamed. And the man in whom the evil spirit was, that evil spirit leaped out of that man onto those seven and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they ran out of the building naked as a jaybird with their tail whooped. Y'all hear me or not? This happened at the church at Ephesus. This was a great church. This was an incredible church. Let's keep looking. We're just doing a little background. And this was known to all the Jews and the Greeks, I guess so, that were dwelling in Ephesus. And say that with me. And what? Fear ought to fall on us. Fear of Almighty God ought to fall on us. If we're saying we have this power to do something and we don't. Did you hear me or not? Say I'm not saying maybe certain people have certain powers from Almighty God. I'm certainly not going to limit him. But I've got two good eyes, and I'm a preacher, and I have the word. Why wouldn't I be able to identify and see if something is true or something is not? Did y'all hear me or not? Only God does what? Only God heals but so many people, Ronnie, want to lay their hands and touch them and say that that's what they got, this power, okay? We know Paul had it. Ha! And I just want to put out a warning to people that we don't want to act like we got something we don't got. Let this be a good warning to us in the Scriptures. Yes or no, amen? Okay? This was known to all of them. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds... So this really shook the town up, man. Many of them also which used curious arts. They were idol worships. They brought their books. They brought idols. They burned them before all men. This happened in Ephesus. They counted the price of them. About 50,000 pieces of silver people were turning in. And, and what they, they did sold for that much. So grew mightily the word of God. Where? In where? Ephesus. That's where we're talking. We're almost done with this part. 
In the same time, there arose no small stir. There was a riot because of what happened, because of the gospel coming into a, a, an area where it was idol worship and demon possession. There were people making money off idols. They were, they were taking advantage of people. And so when the gospel came and made them free, set them free, their businesses were going bankrupt. And so they started rioting in the street. No small stir at a certain man named Demetrius. He was a silversmith. His business about to shut down. Ha! He made silver shrines to Diana. And it didn't bring any small game to him and the craftsmen. They were, they were getting filthy rich off of this stuff. Well, this is what Paul and the gospel did. It upset all of that. This was the church at Ephesus. Did we get a little glimpse of Ephesus? Yes or no? Okay, don't got all day to do that. Say that with me. This was a what? For Jesus. Now, it won't just people getting healed. It's people who are faking it getting the devil to climb in them. Wow. So just be careful. Let's make sure we're doing the right thing. Okay? Keep looking. Now, one of the last things Paul said, this is it. Now, listen very carefully. It's a great church. But one of the last things he said, say it with me. Beware of. Say that out loud. Beware of. It was a great church. What happened? False teachers, he said, will also say it with me. Come from the where? Inside. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after who? Them. So just this was a great church. I hope you're feeling the strength of this church. Now let's get into the problem. The fallen church. The church at Ephesus. The book of Revelation. Unto the angel Jesus writing, speaking to John. To the church at Ephesus write, These things says he that holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the middle of the seven golden candlesticks. I know your works, your labor, your patience, how that you cannot bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them that say they are apostles, say it with me, and are not, we just saw some of that, and you found them to be what? Liars. You've borne, you have patience, and for my name's sake, you've labored, Jesus speaking, and you've not fainted. Would you say it with me? Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. Say it out loud. Because thou hast left thy first love. Church in the last days. Church at Ephesus will leave their first love. Did y'all hear me? Let's keep looking. Remember, remember. From where you're what? That's the title today. The what kind of church? The fallen church. And do what? Repent. Turn around. I'm right here. Walk this way. Do the what kind of works? Do the first thing. Or else I'll come to you quickly. I'll remove the candlestick or the light out of this place except you what? Repent. And then he gives another commendation to them. But this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans. And I ain't got all day to get into the Nicolaitans, but the bottom line is, it's people in authority in the church that lord over the congregation. They become like little gods in the church and people just follow them. That's why I say here, don't, don't you think you're getting heaven by putting your trust in me. You're going straight to hell. Got it? Say. You put your faith in Christ. Okay? The church is a place to love people, not to lord over people. You hear me? He said, I hate it. You hate it? I hate it. 
He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him that overcomes, I'll give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the middle of the paradise of God. Now let's finish the message. Are you ready? Here we go. Y'all care or not? Y'all look shell-shocked. I don't like it when people identify as cats. I also don't like it when people identify things, they say they're this of God and they're not. I don't like that either. I like real. I like truth. I like honesty. You understand? The fallen church. I'd love for you to memorize this verse. Just say it with me. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against you because you have left your first love. I have something against you. You've left your what? Now, the rest of the message isn't hard. Are y'all okay? Here we go. This is the part I want you to really get. Hello, how you doing? I love the youngins. That's all right. That's cool. I love it when they talk. I'm a granddaddy. You ought to hear me with Shore how loud I get in a restaurant when she does. Ah, I do it too. It's crazy. I'm a lunatic. God bless you, sweetie. That's awesome. That's awesome. Let's go to the word again. How do you fall out of love? They fell out of love with Jesus. It's hard on you, but how many would say there was somebody in my life and I really loved them and they walked away from me and I, I still loved them at the time and it was hard. Anybody want to raise their hand and say, that was hard. That was hard. It was hard. They quit and you didn't. You keep, well, what, what happened? How do I do it now? There's all kinds of books written about how to fall out of love. Oh, it's, a, it's a big mega industry out there. How do you do it after this one's done this to you? How do you make it, man? How do you fall out of love? Well, I've, I've broken it down into a nutshell. It's something actually I sort of know how to talk about because I know what it feels like. Well, I've broken it down to you. How do you fall out of love if somebody leaves you and hurts you? Well, they tell you this, cut off communication. It's how you fall out of love. Cut off communication. Don't talk to them. Got it? Number two. Distract yourself. Stay busy. Stay busy. How I many I'm hitting a home run right here? <laughs> it's the truth, ain't it? It's the truth. Stay busy. Be busy. Be busy. Number three, you want to fall out of love? Leave the dream behind. Lose the dream of you and them together. The thoughts that you had, the, the times that you shared, the future that you maybe were going to have together. You've got to leave that dream behind. It's how you fall out of love. Number four, take care of you. Take care of you. Take care of you. This is what the books teach you. I'm not saying the books are wrong. That's really not that bad of advice up there. Take care of you. Focus on who? You. Prioritize who? You. You, you, you. You, you, you. There's no them anymore. There's no you and him or you and her. <clears throat> you. Focus on you. Prioritize you. It's all about who? About you. Well, I was studying in my office this week. You know what I've discovered? It's the same way you fall out of love with Jesus. This church was a great church. And you may have been a great Christian. But you're not now. What happened? How do you fall out of love with Jesus? Oh, and by the way, if you, if you do this in time, you'll get there. You can do it. You can fall out of love. How do you fall out of love with Jesus? How do you do it? 
Never thought I'd try to teach a church this, but I'm going to do it today. Number one, stop talking to him. Cut off communication with him. You hear me or not? Used to thank him for things, things you'd see, special things come up, little things you'd go, well, thank you, Lord. Stop doing that. Don't do that anymore. How about just eat your food? <laughs> Don't thank him for it. You have a problem? Just go talk to mama. Don't talk to him. Stop talking to him. Number two, be busy with everything but Jesus. And what's nice, the church will help you do this. We'll give you this job and that job and this job and that job. And, and what's nice is you can think you're still in love with him, but you really ain't. You're busy. Number three, forget him. Forget Jesus. What do I mean by that? Forget, Gary, how he saved you in Rockingham. Don't ever mention Rockingham again, Gary. Forget how he saved your drunk mama, Gary. Forget that house you grew up in and the life you had. And where Jesus took you in your life and how good he's been to you your whole life. You forget that. You forget Jesus. You forget there's a place he's preparing for you right now. You forget that mama is waiting on the other side, Gary. Forget it. Don't think about it. You want to fall out of love with Jesus? Lose the dream. And remember, it's all about you. Yeah. Focus on you. Prioritize you. Me, 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 you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It may take some time. Say it with me, but you know what? You'll get there. This church left their first love. We love him because he what? It's funny. We get saved. And so many times it becomes, we, we get in charge a little bit later in life. And we lose the wonder of our salvation. You hear me or not? So that's how you fall out of love. Fall out of love with Jesus. Now here's the good part. Okay? How not to fall out of love with Jesus? Isn't that the good part? Yes or no? Wow, man, he had me. I'm about ready to jump out. How not to fall out of love with Jesus. This isn't hard. This is going to stick with you. You're not going to forget this. You might not like me. Good. You're going to remember me. What I said today, number one, how do I not fall out of love with Jesus? Talk to him. Talk to him. He's there. He cares for you. He loves you. Talk to him. What will people think? Who gives a rip? He's my Savior. He's my Lord. I see a sunset. Thank you, Lord. You did that. You hear crap on TV. Oh, the world blew up and billions. Yeah, no, it didn't. no. My father did that. That's a lie. Thank you, Lord. You hear me? Talk to him about your problems. Talk to him about the good things. I've got there's certain people they that I've known if they if they if they'll be in a parking lot, they get a good parking space, they'll go, thank you, Jesus. And we think they're crazy. They're not crazy. People lose something, lose a piece of jewelry. They lose something. They forget where they place something. And they find it. Go, well, thank you, Lord. Why not talk to him like you would a friend? Yes or no? Don't fall out of love with him. Rehearse where he found you, how he saved you, that pit he dug you out of, the crap he helped you get through in your life. Sometimes just sit out back with a glass of tea and just talk with him about it again. And see if you don't rekindle that fire. Number two, fall down at his feet. Fall down at his feet. I'm a bad man. That's who preaches at the fellowship church. A bad man preaches at the fellowship church. 
I'm not a good man. I'm a bad man. Jesus saved a bad man. I know I'm in Christ, but the battle still rages in me. And I struggle. I fall short. I fall way short. And some people would, other churches would tell, tell you that when I do that, I'm going to hell. I'm not going to hell because he loved me first. It wasn't my plan. He did it. Yeah, thank the Lord. He loved me first. That's why I'm not going to hell, okay? I didn't take over now. It's not me now. I took over now. I'm in charge now. I got it, Jesus. No, I'm a bad man. <laughs> so, buddy, it is no problem. And nice thing about starting a church in high school like we did, we didn't have a dime's worth of nothing. We didn't have two nickels together. Anything we have here, when you hear me say God gets all the credit, God gets all the credit. Fall at his feet. Thank him. Fall at his feet. What does that mean? You keep him way up here and you keep you way down here. <laughs> That's what that means. And you'll stay in love with him. You'll start to see how pretty his feet are. It's funny how people like their feet rubbed. Is that true? Maybe Jesus does too. Maybe when we're down there low, that's right where he would love us to be. You hear me or not? I can rub Kim's feet and I convince her of anything. <laughs> Stay at Jesus' feet. Number three. I don't want to fall out of love with you, Lord. How do I do it? Remember Jesus. Remember him. I said that a little bit already, but remember what he's done for you. Yes or no? How many, you're being honest, without him, you most likely would be dead right now. Without him, how many would say, for sure, for sure, no doubt about it, I would be in a devil's hell, burning. Remember that. Yes or no? When you stand in righteous, self-righteousness over somebody. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Remember him. Number four, keep Jesus. What's the Bible say? Love you with all your heart, soul, and mind, and, and love you some more. No, it says love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. So he does talk about loving you, but just make sure that's... Not before me, because I am love. All love you've ever had comes from me. When you didn't know me and had love, that love came from me. Anything you've ever felt that is love and it was pure came from me, even when you were lost and undone. Any love you have is me. Don't leave your first love, because when you do, you left where love comes from. You hear me? We're done, Raji. We got communion. I'm terrible. Let's finish with this. And this was manifested the love of God toward us because it God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Here in his love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation of the sacrifice for our sins. And we've seen and we do testify the Father sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwells in him and, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love. And he that dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect or mature, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love. He loves you. He loves me. There's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Fear has torment. He that fears is not made perfect in love. Verse 19, would you say it with me? We love because he first loved us. Paul said, if you've got a great church, and the last thing he said, beware, beware, beware. From without and from within. And it happened. 
and this church fell. You hear me? Did you get the point today? Let's thank you for his word. Let's go. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Woo. Amen. Stand on up with me. I appreciate it. We do have communion. And we're going to walk out there. And it's hot. But thankfully, it's, it's uh, well, it's hot. It's just the way it is. <laughs> okay. It's just hot. Okay. We're going to have communion. You'd rather me be long-winded in here than out there, okay? Here we go. Lord, thank you for your word today. Help it find good ground. May we not forget what we heard. May we realize there's one thing that's just not going to work in this relationship with you, and that's faking it. We can identify as a Christian or identify as whatever, but if it's not there and it's not real and it's not sincere and it's not going to fly. So, Lord, I pray you'll help us. Help us as a church to never forget who we are. We love you and we love people. And we matter. We matter too. But not like you. <laughs> no. We get our worth from you. So, Lord, bless this word to our heart, we pray. In Jesus' name. Finally, with heads bowed this morning, if today you died and you don't know you'd go to heaven, bottom line is, you know this. If there's a doubt, like, I, well, maybe I'm not sure, maybe I maybe, would you today firm that up? Would you put your faith in Jesus Christ and no one else today? He's the only one who can save you. He died on a cross. He rose from the dead so you could have everlasting life. But you must put your faith in him. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Can I lead you in a prayer right now where you put your faith in him and not in a church, not in a preacher, not in yourself? He loved you first. Would you tell him you appreciate it and receive him into your heart today? Can I pray with you now? Let's pray together. Right where you are. Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I'm a bad man or bad woman. And I ask for your forgiveness. And Jesus, I want you to know today that I believe you loved me first. And you died on a cross and rose from the dead so I could be saved. So I put my faith in you, Jesus, the one who first loved me. Come into my life and live through me. Help me never, ever, ever again think that I saved myself or church saved me. And always remember, it was Jesus who saved me. We pray in his name, Jesus' name. Amen. With heads bowed, how many would lift a hand and say, Pastor Gary, I said that prayer with you, Pastor. I did. I did, Pastor. I don't know everybody. I don't. But I want you to make sure you nail that. I love that. God bless you today. Lord, help us as we have communion. Help us to fall in love with you again or get closer to you than we have been. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go. Amen. Praise the Lord, guys. Come on.